Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday, and there's always room for one more. Hey, come right this way. Have a seat with me today in the corner booth. We're celebrating episode number 129 of the Genealogy and uh, Curious News and Notes podcast. Sweeney, clear the floor. Katie, bar that door. Molly, put on another pot of Irish coffee and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Another full house today, not a chair to spare. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, and you can reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com anytime. And be sure to check out my written show notes on my blog. We have a lot of links there that take you places and tell you some things that may not be on uh, uh, the podcast and vice versa. There might be some things on the podcast that don't show up on the notes. Uh, You know how that goes, don't you? And remember, you can call 816-256-3360 and leave your comments on my recorder. Try it, you'll like it. Among today's topics, Maloney is the Irish family name of the day. My right foot found. Getting Irish citizenship. Convicts to Australia. Grandparents' pilgrimage to where in Ireland? Donegal designer shoes. And lessons from the Irish head school. Hey, that brings us right up to notes for the week. And uh, well, we just got one big thing going on here. It's taking up all of my time. Uh, I think most of you will enjoy it, though, if we ever get it actually uh, out to you. And that's be all about the upcoming launch of Lessons from the Irish Hedgerow or Irish Hedgerow History uh, Lessons, People, Places, Events, and maybe even some travel and uh I think we'll list it as Irish Hedgerow History on iTunes, but it'll also be available on my webpage. And this is our new broadcast series. It's going to be our sixth one, which is pretty amazing considering I've got to run this cafe and uh, uh, put out these podcasts at the same time. But we think you're going to like it, and uh, we'll have some lessons of interest to everyone who attends. Uh, Of course, you should actually know the uh, history of the Hedge School in Ireland, but... We'll tell you all about that, too, in case you don't. And uh, we'll be including some things that will interest family researchers, too. And our first show is going to announce the upcoming series. And it should be available uh, at irishroots.com this week. And it usually takes another week or two to uh, get approved by iTunes and put on the air, so to speak. Uh, So you can wait for that one, too. But you know what? I think I'll give you a preview in front of... uh, Everybody else, before it hit, hits iTunes at all and before anybody knows it's uh, on my webpage, I'm going to play you uh, I'm gonna play you what I've been working on for the last day. I had to get the announcement out sort of quick. So I'm going to play it to you right here, and it's also going to be the first, uh, first announcement of the podcast on the uh, iTunes and on, on the show itself. So you're just going to get an advanced uh, hearing of it, you might say. And we're going to keep you posted on upcoming episodes as they come about. And, uh, you know, we've already done some on uh, things like Brian Baru and the famine and uh, De Valera and the Irish political parties and things like that. So be sure to subscribe to this one as soon as it's available. And be sure to send us your questions or drop me a line on that uh, that phone number I just gave you and uh, or send me an email. And tell me what topic you like us to cover, and we'll put it on the agenda. And do that before it all fills up, too. That would be best. So that's going to take care of it for the note for the week. That's taken up all my time. So uh, right now I'm going to play that little introduction for you, and then we'll get right back to this podcast.
Lessons from the Hedgerow Through the dark time of famine and war and of brother against brother, the Vikings and Normans and all of the other, some survived behind the hedges, starving little scholars beneath the ledges. Lesson learned on mud and stone, it was they who finally brought us home. Welcome to Lessons from the Irish Hedgerow with Peter Riley Adams and Michael O'Laughlin from the Irish Roots Cafe and irishroots.com. In the tradition of the Irish Head School, we announce our availability. Though now in a modern age, we may well be heard just as they were heard in centuries past, with lessons learned by the side of the road, in small rooms, in nooks and crannies, whenever and wherever possible. We will be holding class regularly with you and sharing what we have learned. Now, here is your first assignment. Should you decide to become a student in our little head school here, what era in Irish history might you have a question about? What individual would you enjoy knowing more about? As teachers at the head school, we will bring our talents to bear on your questions and uncover what we may for you, and we do hope you'll share the same with us. So send your question of any kind now. Peter and I will make a brief introduction of ourselves in the uh, next meeting of the Hedgerow. In the meantime, send your questions and curiosities so we can set our class agenda for the rest of this year. Oh, yes, and by the way, hedge schools were also known as pay schools, and that's where the student would scrape together whatever small pittance they might have uh, just to keep the teacher fed, supplied, and clothed while they were in the community. Well, we'll be in your community for a while yet, so donations, memberships, and participation is indeed welcome. Uh, we thank you again for that. Now, this broadcast marks the official opening of the Irish Hedgerow classes at irishroots.com. Uh, we're, we've got a lot of new things coming up, and this is the beginning of it. And our other series of broadcasts and podcasts include those on genealogy, music and song, local history, and videos. I'd like to thank you for all the help and support you've given us that uh, uh, led us to release this, uh, really, our sixth podcast feed. Well, we'll hope to see you again, and this is the official opening of the Irish Hedgerow. Thank you. Well, that was it for uh, Lessons from the Irish Hedgerow. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get a chance to sign up to it and listen to all of them as we go along. Hey, the book of the month is going to be uh, Families of County Donegal, Ireland, and County Donegal, Ireland Genealogy and Family History Notes. Both of those come from my 34-volume set that I wrote and uh, published uh, really just a year or two ago. I finished up with them all. Uh, the first one is hardbound and has a lot of family history in it. The second one is spiral bound and it has a lot about how to find your family in Ireland, how to actually research within the county. So between the two of them, they cover a whole lot of territory. Uh, and as I still have to remind you again, some people don't know that we've got a blog, blog reader and a podcast and that blog reader, uh, it's pretty good. It's just a computerized voice. I was so taken with how good they've gotten. I decided I'd put it up there for a while. Uh, so if it, this sounds like it's a uh, being read by a computer, almost perfect, then uh, that's the blog reader. And I've also got a podcast, and that's where I talk uh, live in my own voice. And uh, I'll have some things that aren't on the blog. So just keeping you posted on that. Hey, and you know what else we've got coming up later in this uh, podcast? Just what really exploded in the skies over Ireland. 
There's been a lot of talk about that over the last two weeks, so we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. But now you know what time it is. It's time to raise our eyes skywards, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. Kelly Marcuse of Victoria, Australia, your county Dublin genealogy book has shipped. Sister Sylvia of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, your county Mayo genealogy book has shipped. Michael Cooper of Upminster in the UK, your Irish genealogies has shipped. That's volume three of Keating's History of Ireland. Uh, Benjamin O'Connor of Perth, Australia, your Galway genealogy book has shipped. Austin Leahy of Lady Lake, Florida, Your 1659 census has shipped. And number six, David Madden of Ridgewood, New Jersey. Your County Mayo uh, genealogy book has shipped. And Richard Milligan of Apache, Arizona. Welcome as a new member. Hey, I'd like to say to thank you uh, to all of our members out there and to everybody who's uh, gotten one of my books because that keeps us afloat. And like I've said so many times before, without you, we can't make it. The whole thing is uh, is just based on your support, so I hope you're getting good things out of what I'm doing. And, hey, this is pretty neat today. You look at who did what. We've got somebody from Australia and Wisconsin and the U.K. and another one from Australia. That's pretty darn good. We must be reaching some people out there. But I'd just like to say uh, thank you to each and every one of you. I sure appreciate you keeping us afloat. Well, now it's time we move on to what we're going to move to the Irish family name of the day. And the name for the day is Maloney. Today's family history is in honor of member Maureen Maloney. And you know there's a lot of related spellings of the name that can be confused with it, or they could be a completely separate name. Uh, Of course, it can be O. Maloney. We all know that. And then sometimes you can put a W in there and spell it Ma-Lonely, M-A-W-L-O-N-E-Y, or even Me-Lonely, M-E-L-O-N-E-Y. I've got a few more examples on the web page, and that comes from uh, variant spelling group number 2510 for most of them, from the book, which is the Master Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. Link to that on the blog. That's another one I put together just a few years ago. I hope it's helping a, helping a few of you out there. Now let's take a few look at uh, some notes on the history of the name. We'll just take uh, part of what I've got listed in the book of Irish families, great and small. Uh, now it's from the Irish name, of course, which is spelt in the Irish language, which they say might mean servant of the church. And the O'Malonies were a Dalcasian sept of Kiltannan by Tulla in the eastern part of County Clare. Now, the Dalcasians, they were the same family that uh, Brian Baru was uh, was of. So if they're a true Dalcasian sep, they're really related to Brian Baru somewhere along the way, and he's a famous one. And uh, the O'Malonies are found in Keating's history, and they're given just like this. It says, the O'Malonies were chiefs of Coltenon, now the parish of Kilton and Lee, in the barony of Tulla, county of Clare. They remain in the Clare, Limerick, and Tipperary regions. And if we take a look in the Irish Book of Arms, it gives one uh, Maloney of Cragg, County Clare, in that book. And that line, that family, traces itself back to John O'Maloney, who died in 1610, and whose motto is given as, In Domino et non in Arcu mio es parabo. And one Alfred Maloney of that family is cited in that book as well. So that's just a few things for you to think about. And if you can trace back to 1610, well, I think you're ready to uh, write a book yourself, aren't you, on the O'Maloney family? Well, let's move on to, we covered, uh, well, we'll go ahead and do the Irish Family Coats of Arms from the Irish Book of Arms, another one of the books I published uh, several years back. And it's found in the Irish Book of Arms, plate number 207. And it reads uh, underneath the uh, arms, Azure on the dexter side, a quiver of three arrows, on the sinister, a bow erect all o'er. 
And of course, ore, I believe, means gold. So that means it would be uh, golden. That's pretty nice. Uh, hey, coming up later in this episode, we're going to talk about uh, what's the deal with the tax-free status in Ireland. And uh, hey, we've got one more thing on Maloney, uh, the free master index search of Irish names at irishroots.com. I looked at that. I just did it for fun, and I pulled up 35 uh, references to the names in my books. And I'll just take seven of them here. We find uh, Maloney is in the book Missouri Irish. And it's also in the book Irish Families on the California Trail. And I've either published or republished both of those in the last five years. And Maloney is in the King James Irish Army list. And Cornelius Maloney's uh, obituary is found in the Journal of the American Irish Historical Society, Volume 13. And we also find uh, the families of Kerry and the families of Limerick both have the name in it. And... Uh, you also find a reference to the Maloney Arms in the families of County Clare, Ireland, which fits because that sounds like it's an old homeland for the Dalcations, doesn't it now? Well, it's time we move on to the websites of the week. Number one, we picked uh, Maloney Genealogy Queries for the first website. That should help somebody if they haven't uh, done any research on the web. And number two, there's a nice little, I got some response on this one, uh, looking for convicts to Australia. Well, you can find that at convictcentral.com. And a hat tip there to Google Genealogy that had that on Twitter this last week, but uh, several people have liked it. So I've also got a link on the blog. Number three, uh, the huge explosion over the skies in Ireland. At least that's what a whole lot of people saw. So I went out and found that link, and I've got it on uh, on my blog, and it was a story off the BBC. So there's your tip for the day. And number four, a lot of people are always writing me about and, and wanting to know about getting their Irish citizenship uh, just because you've got Irish ancestors and how that works. So I've got a link on the blog uh, right there to one uh, to one person's answer to that question. So that should help. And boy, that's taken us right up to, uh, today we're doing great. That's taken us right up to the Curious News and Notes. Number one, my right foot. Well, you know, there was a 2,000-year-old foot that was uh, actually two of them, but they were both right feet found in the attic in Dublin, and uh, it says that they were found while they were renovating the attic of the house in South Dublin. Now, one of them is of a child, and the other one is of an adult. And how in the world could you end up with uh, two 2,000-year-old right feet in your attic? You must have set them there and forgot and uh, gone off and left, left them, of course, you're probably not around either, but they think it might have been somebody connected with the university and... Uh, uh, digging up some of those bog men, and uh, they just happened to find those and didn't quite remember the right time to bring them back. Or maybe they were trying to see if there was a market for right feet. I don't know. Number Got the link on the blog. That was out of the Irish Times. Number two, annual grandparents pilgrimage to... Knock County Mayo. That's the shrine of Knock in County Mayo. And I got that off of RTE. You can read more about it on the blog. You can click that link or just do a search on your computer. Number three, uh, they've got a Titanic themed hotel planned to go up in Belfast. And I'm thinking to myself, is that a good idea or not? Now, I've seen a Titanic themed bar where you could go in, have a drink, and leave. But I don't know if I'd want to stay inside the Titanic. Uh, not that it'd make much difference, but that's just very curious. It sure makes me think anyway. So uh, that's in the Irish World article there, and I've got that on the blog. You can get to it. And number four, calling all Greeny family members. That's G-R-E-A-N-E-Y. And, uh, you know, it's time to say hello to your cousins in Ireland. And uh, that's because Siobhan and Noel Greeny of Oranmore, County Galway, have won $9.8 million. 
and it would be just the perfect time to stop by and say, hi, we've been meaning to talk to you for years, but uh, we just thought we'd say hello. And that was out of the Irish Times, too. Uh, Number five, Irish writers, musicians, and artists have been tax-free for a long time. But all that may change. You know, now that hard times are coming, uh, uh, they may have to take it from everybody. But then a lot of people would have to change their residence out of Ireland. That wouldn't be good. Uh, That's off the BBC. You've got a link on the blog. They're thinking about changing that tax-free status I guess as a writer, I could go over there and pay no taxes. That'd be nice. Of course, you have to have a certain amount of income to pay taxes on it, so it probably wouldn't do me any good. Uh, Number six, the last one of the day. If the chew fits, uh, the designer of Donegal Tweed Boots, they've launched a new one, and it's uh, uh, Donegal Tweed Boots, and it's Chew, I guess, is the designer. And they've added Donegal Tweed to the boots. So I don't know where you'd be walking around in those boots, but it sure would be some fancy boots, wouldn't it? And you wouldn't do that out in the field, or you wouldn't be cutting any peat with those boots on. And I bet they cost a couple hundred dollars. Uh, So that's for the richer people in my listening audience. If you're in that uh, market, look for those Chew boots, Donegal Tweed, special designer fashion. Well, that's it for the day. We've had a good one. We've been busy working on that uh, Lessons from the Irish Hedge podcast. So we'll be back to you next week in one of them or both of them. We'll see. Remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at irishroots.com or send by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360. Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, You can get me at MySpace or Facebook or Twitter or even on Irish Central where we've got some new things going on and there's some more to come on that, so keep your eyes up. We'll be talking about that next week probably. And remember, members foot the bill so they get first priority. But we're open to all, and by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Uh,